What I want to talk about today is I want to show you how we get from nothing to something showing you in the game. And there's a couple tools that we use in the studio. Uh, we use some editors that we built ourselves uh, inside the studio. We also use um, some, some tools. Uh, and one of the big tools that we use in the studio, believe it or not, is Microsoft Excel. And the reason we use Microsoft Excel is it's a great sort of data management tool. It allows us to put a bunch of data in one place and do calculations and things on data that, you know, Microsoft has figured out how to do a concatenate function and stuff like that. We don't have to write all that. It's all there. And it's easy for a designer like me to get in and look at a bunch of data in something like Excel. So let's take a look at, uh, for instance, I want to, um, let's take a look at, this set of trees right here. Here's a nice little uh, autumn forest, right? Ooh, look at that pretty autumn forest. And you can run a road through the little autumn forest and make a little path, you know, that's kind of pretty. And let's say that I want to put, you know, maybe some, maybe not some autumn forest, but maybe some mixed autumn and not autumn forest here, get rid of that road. Um, so there's some, some pretty little stuff right there. And maybe over here, I want that to turn into like this not autumn forest at all, this kind of green forest, right? So let's say I want to build that. How do I get, how do I get to the point where I can put that in the game, right? Well, it's all going to start somewhere very simple. It's going to start with some trees. So anyway, uh, here's a bunch of decals that the artists have made that we can put into the game with mushrooms and, and whatever. So somewhere in here, if I look around, um, I'll find, there, there we go. Here's a bunch of foresty objects that the artists have made for me. And they've made some simple little trees and some simple little brushes. So here, for instance, is uh, a block of forest. Woo, interesting. Um, so how do I get that block of forest in the game? Well, importantly, I don't want that block of forest to just be a decal. I want it to have some kind of meaning. It has to be tagged. The player has to know that this block of forest is a forest and the forest has these properties and blah, blah, blah. I have to have all of that in the game. The other thing is when I go back to my editor, I want these forests to have, um, I want to be able to put down forests. I don't want to have to put down like five different kinds of forests and not have it tile. And what I mean by tile is if you take the same image and just go do, 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 do. If there's one like white tree or, or uh, let's say a yellow tree in the center of that, you'll see that yellow tree repeat. Boom, 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 boom. And it makes your, makes your map look really ugly. So you want it to not do that. So we want to make sure that each time I put down one of these forest tiles, you can see it's a little bit different. You don't see the tiling pattern here. So we want to make sure that we don't, um, we don't have ugly tiling in our stuff. So how do I put all that together? The other thing that I want to get to is I don't want... Because remember, we're shipping this editor, so we, we, we can't just make this something that, uh, you know, designers like, oh, okay, I can deal with that. And I, you know, there's, there's a thing that I read and I understand how it all works. It has to all be very intuitive and simple for a user to get in and use. So what we do, we start with uh, these trees, right? Um, and I say, okay, I want that tree in my game. So the next thing I do is I go open up an Excel file. And let's see, here's my... Um, Excel file. So now I've unlocked an SVN, which for those of you who don't know what SVN is, SVN is, it's a piece of software that allows us to uh, have source control over our software. So let's say I have this Excel file, which is the, um, here, I'll show you. Um, so I need this data file and there's a number of Excel files in the game that do different things. Here's the, the data file. And this data file, if I open it, um, includes a bunch of data about how this game is built. Um, here you go. Here it is there now. Um, so here's, uh, and you can see down at the bottom, there's a bunch of different tabs. All of these tabs allow us to do different things to the game. Right now we're interested in the decals tab. Um, but let's say I went and made a bunch of changes. I don't want to have all of those changes uh, be something where I have to be like, hey, Nelson, I made a bunch of changes to this file. So make sure that you use this and email it to him. And you can't work like that. That's crazy, right? So what you do with SVN is there's one repository somewhere of all of the files and you check out the file, you make your changes to it, you check it back in. And then when anyone else wants to use the file, they have to go and look in the repository and the repository says, no, 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 Chris is using that right now. So you don't want to mess with that file until Chris checks in his version and then you can work on the version that he worked in. It's great. It's a pretty, pretty, uh, simple stuff. And it's, it, this is classic software stuff. Anyone who works in software knows this. So anyway, here's a bunch of stuff. This is the decals folder. So in the decals folder, you can see 
um, I've got this decal over here named fall zero one. So somewhere in here, I'll find, ah, there's fall zero one. Um, and you'll notice it's actually, this is a, a thing that's only available when autumn happens, which I don't know if we're gonna actually use that in a game or not, but anyway. Um, so here I've actually referenced all of my uh, art. So, and the reason I do it like this is I might want to use something for more than one thing. And I don't want to, because remember when you're gonna download this file, every one of these little pictures of trees shows up in your hard drive, right? And the more pictures of trees we have, the bigger the game is and the longer it takes to download and people don't like that. So we don't want to download the same asset 15 different times just because we use it in 15 different places. So I can actually say, for instance, if I want this fall one tree to be used like five different places and five different things, I could assign this decal to, or this, this piece of this texture to a bunch of different things, right? Um, Anyway, back to this. Um, so now I've decided that this is a decal. So the next thing I want to do is I need to define the tile shape. And when I talk about the tile shape, let's go back to our editor real quick. Um, here's here's the actual, actually, let's go back to the other editor for a moment. We'll come back to this. So um, you'll notice not all of the tiles I place have only one hex. Some of them are multi-hex tiles, right? is because I may want to put some big stuff in here, like bam, look at this big hunk of mountains. And this may be a bigger decal than one hex can handle. So I want to be able to throw down like some, some big old stuff like that. Or let's see, what's another? Uh, maybe I want to have uh, this big, huge range of infected mountains right here. And I just want to be like, ah, oh, boom. And that's put down, right? So um, I need to be able to define that. So I go over to my, my tile shapes. And here we do some funky math. I don't know if anyone, I'm not gonna go into the math because it's boring. But anyway, here I go into some math to figure out, you know, what kind of tile shape am I going to use uh, for the multi-hex tiles. But for the moment, we're doing a single hex tile, so this doesn't matter, right? Um, so now I need to say, what is what, right? So in the game, we have to have a concept of terrain. These terrains are something that the, uh, the player understands. So for instance, I may have a unit that does extra damage on when he's fighting in the woods or does extra damage when he's fighting in a swamp, or maybe this guy has a movement bonus when he's in the tundra. And so I need to have like a set quantified list. I mean, I can't, and the player can't possibly be expected to keep track of all of these different terrains, right? Um, you know, this is, I don't know what this is. So I, somewhere it's gotta have a little tag that says, you know what? Maybe it's a forest that's the autumn forest, or maybe it's a pine forest, but you know, a pine forest is a forest. And so now I can say, here are my basic kinds of land. So here are our basic terrain types that the player can understand. Um, now you'll notice, by the way, it has an ugly name. It's T-E-R underscore city, T-E-R underscore desert. Why do we do it like that, right? Um, obviously it would be much prettier if I just called it desert or forest. Well, the reason for this is at some point in this game's life, it's going to be made into German. And when we make it into German, I want to be able to quickly say everything that we call the desert, what I'll do is I actually put together a, a localization file. And in fact, I can show you one of those if you're curious. So in our localization file, you can see here is all of these things that, so for instance, right here, here is our T-E-R underscore desert. And this is now translated as deserts in English, right? And later on, there'll be a column here and a column here and a column here for French and German and Spanish and Japanese and whatever. And so now, um, wherever something exists that says T-E-R underscore desert, it will replace that with whatever language you want. And we do that for every single piece of text in the game. And the reason that we'd use the little underscores is if I just said desert and I said replace desert with German, maybe somewhere in the game, I have a piece of text that says we have to go to the desert. And it would look at that piece of text and it would say, ha, ah, that thing in the center of it where it says desert, that's desert. I'm supposed to replace that in German. And so it would say, we need to go to the German word for desert. And that would be weird, right? And so what I do instead, no, I don't want to save that, um, is I always make sure there's an underscore, right? And the underscore, because we don't in any language use an underscore as part of our language, as long as the full word includes an underscore, it knows, ah, this is like a special thing. This is a thing. So when it goes and, and search for places for stuff, it does that. So anyway, there's that thing. Um, so now we've defined, I want a forest. So that's what this getting back to our, our autumn forest. Now we know that we want an autumn forest. Here's the forest object. So now I'm going to go over to my tiles and I'm going to say, I'm going to make a tile called 
forest fall, right? And that forest fall tile is going to use this forest uh, designation. So I now know that when I place this special hex, which is a little fall foliage on a tile, it knows that that's a forest. As opposed, and and you can see there's a, a mixed um, autumn and not autumn foliage. There's a the uh, forest hard, which is hardwood. So getting back to the forest and whatnot. So I've made a forest fall, right? I've said that it's a forest. I've said that I want the surface underneath it to be uh, tile 005. So anyway, now I've said I've got a forest. I want that forest to be this. Um, now the next thing I want to do is I want to go build it. And for that, we have the tile editor, which is this thing right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm somewhere in here. Um, I'm going to have a, you can see there's all of this other stuff. There's a hex uh autumn forest do, 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 hex forest um fall there we go here's my hex forest fall right and so the next thing i want to do is i need to put my trees down on my fall forest so let's go find my trees here's all here's all the trees that we put in here's all those decals and i can say hey i want to put some trees like that yay look trees um Let's see, I put some little trees like that, however I want to do it, right? Now you can see I've already done a bunch of these. So Hex Forest Fall, and you'll notice there's an A and a B and a C and a D and an E, and the reason for the A, B, C, D, and E is these are different versions of the same thing, which save us from that tiling problem. So when I put down Fall Forest, it'll just randomly pick A through whatever we got, I guess, G, and say, I'm going to use that one, right? So... You'll notice also there's this one called Forest Road A, right? And the road ones are, if I go back to my thing here, you'll notice, let's say I put this big forest down, you'll notice where the road is, it kind of cuts the forest away, right? Let's say I want to drive a little road through this uh, pine forest here, right? Um, when I drive that road through this pine forest, um, it's got to delete a bunch of trees. And so what I've done is I've actually created some special versions of these tiles, which don't have trees where the roads go. And that way, when I drive a road through, it says, hey, don't show uh, forest pine A, show forest pine A road, which is the one where I have not put any pine trees where the road goes. Um, it's a bit of a labor intensive process, but that's how we get this really nice, uh, pretty organic look. Let's say I want to put one of these. I think this is a an in or something like that. If I want to put it in there, it automatically deletes the, the, the forest out of the way. And, and this is handled kind of in the same way. So here's my fall underscore A. So this is what I saved out as fall underscore A. That's it. So now I save that out. And when I do that, it all shows up in the editor. And when I go to the editor list, you can see here are all of the tiles that we've made. So this is all of the fall what forest underscore fall a b c d e f whatever this is forest mix a b c d e f this is forest hard a b c d e f forest pine a b c d e f forest pine mix a b c d e f right so if i were to grab this mixed forest pine um i can go lay pine forest all over my let's delete these buildings real quick um And that's it. That's how we build it. And so what this does is it means that for the user, when you buy the game and you want to go build a map, the only step of this process that you have to worry about is, hey, I want some forest. I want a forest that looks like that. I want to put it here. And that's it. That's all you got to do. You're done, right? And that's that's really important to me. I mean, there's a lot of people who say we want to give you you know access to the editor and stuff. But once you make that decision, and this is what we were talking about back when we made Legends of Kalasia, and people are like, oh, you should release your editor. Our editor for Kalasia didn't look anything like this, right? The editor itself is almost like a, it's almost like its own little game. It's a, it's like a game within a game that we have to build because we have to understand that the user is going to be using this and the users are, you know, they don't have the time and the energy. This is not a job for them. This is a fun thing that they're doing for them. So we have to make sure that it's, it's simple and easy for them to get in. Now, as a side bonus, when I build the game, I'll be damned if I don't use this editor, right? So I'm actually going to have a way nicer editor to build levels on this game than I ever had in Kalasia. 
And the spin-off value of that is I'm probably going to be able to build a lot more levels. We're going to spend a lot more time testing levels and stuff. So it's going to be a lot faster and easier to change levels than it was in Kalasia. So that and and that's going to make a real difference in the game because we can actually spend a lot more time saying, you know, oh, this level with too much forest isn't fun. Let's get rid of all this forest and let's put some, you know, I really like it when we play with desert. So let's put some more desert in this level and you know, uh, you know, I, I think these uh, these wastes are, are cool. Let's get some more of these wastes in our level. Where's my waste? There's my waste. Get a little bit more of that in the, the game because that, that's always cool, right? Um, we can do a little bit more of this in the game than we were doing in Kalasia because you can see how fast it is. To make that change in Kalasia that I just did in 20 seconds would have been in the Kalasia level development model, me drawing something up, handing it to an artist, having an artist go draw it, having that exported in Photoshop, having those Photoshop layers built back in. What I just did right now to put that desert and that waste in there that took me 20 seconds, um, that would probably have been three or four hours in Kalasia. And so that changes everything. It, it changes the speed at which we can develop. It changes the, the speed at which we can make changes. So there's that.